The large intestine is the final opportunity for our body to absorb nutrients and other substances from what we eat. Most of our water is absorbed here. It also reabsorbs some of the bile salts, vitamin K used for blood clotting, vitamins B7, biotin, and B5, panophenic acid. Bacteria in the large intestine convert bilirubin to urobilinogen, which is further broken down to give the dark color of feces. Finally, anything that did not get digested gets eliminated as feces. The large intestine wraps around the abdominal cavity like a box, starting from a pouch-like area called the cecum. Extending inferiorly is the appendix. This is a shriveled up part of the cecum. Some people will have a small opening to this area that traps food particles, which will ferment, causing appendicitis or an inflamed appendix. The ascending colon goes up toward the liver. The colon then makes a right turn called the right colic flexure, or more commonly, the hepatic flexure. The transverse colon goes across the top to another right downward turn called the left colic flexure, or more commonly, the splenic flexure. The descending colon goes straight down until it begins to curve. At that point, it becomes the sigmoid colon because it's represented by an S. The final straight segment is the rectum. The exit of the contents from the body is regulated by two anal sphincters. The internal anal sphincter is made of smooth muscle, so it is involuntary. This opens when the feces arrive, sort of like what happens with a baby when they go in their diaper. The external anal sphincter is made of skeletal muscle, so it is voluntary to allow us to hold it until we allow it to open. This control is what potty training is about. One of the more visible features of the large intestine is the stripe or line that runs along the length of it. This is the tenia coli, which holds the large intestine in a gathered position, creating pouches called haustra all along the ascending, transverse, and descending colon. The histology of the colon is different from the small intestine because it does not have villi extending into the lumen. They are fused together, so there are still simple columnar epithelial tissue. However, the colon is unique in that there are so many mucus-filled goblet cells embedded within it.